What the business, bro? We back at it again with another video, guys. So look, what we're doing today is not different. I'll be honest with you guys. It's not different at all. I'm doing a reaction video to top 10 extreme natural disasters that might happen in 2021. See, 2020 was already a horrible year. We all know that, but you know, 2021, let's just hope it's the year. It doesn't look like it's going to be the year from what I'm seeing right now from this title, guys. But let's just hope for the best. Anyways, guys, yo, let's just get straight to it, guys. Honest, hey, hey before, but yo, before we even get to it, guys, listen, if, you, if, if you're able to breathe physically, you need to like right now. If not, you're going to stop breathing. And subscribe. If you don't subscribe, then just, just subscribe, please. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get to it. From things under the water, to the Earth's surface, to our galaxy and solar system, there are so many things that really could go wrong for us that we have little to no control over. On today's most amazing top 10 list, I'll be coming- Before she starts talking, just look at my hair. Tell me this is not the best hair you've ever seen in your life. Say mashallah before my hair falls off tomorrow. All right, let's get to it. Bring just a few of the most extreme natural disasters that we could see in 2021. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot today, we have the Yellowstone National Park Supervolcano. Yellowstone National Park is located in the Western United States and is a beautiful park with lakes and canyons and mountain ranges. While the word supervolcano God, sounds very cool, it is actually a pretty terrifying concept and Yellowstone National Park sits right uh before all you uh blue haired girls get at me in the comments i just want to let you know uh when i say thank god i'm just saying thank god that my family and i will be okay but i pray for everybody that's in that area okay so all you bl first of all there shouldn't be, be no blue haired girls on my channel so get the fuck out right on top of one. If this volcano wasn't currently active, it would be no big deal, but that is not the case here. The last time the volcano erupted was 630,000 years ago, which I know is a very, very long time. But the scientists who study volcanoes have discovered that this super volcano erupts every 600 to 700,000 no no years. No this means that it really could just decide to erupt any day from today to long, long, long after we're all dead. I sure am hoping for the the latter. The eruption of this volcano could end human civilization, so let's hope that it can hold out to that 700,000 year mark so we don't have anything to worry about. Did she say it could end human civilization like as of like all of us? Yo, every blue haired girl, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Uh... Let's just hope to, let's just pray to God that we last longer. I have a lot of shit to do, bro. I have to make it on YouTube. I have to be a millionaire. I have to, I have a lot of things to do, bro. Let's just pray to God it doesn't erupt anytime soon. Out. Moving on to number nine, we have the Helena Slump. This unstable slope is located just south of Hawaii's biggest island, and every so often it creates a landslide that is the cause of tsunamis. There is evidence that around 120,000 years ago, there was a really large landslide on the slope that caused a tsunami over 400 meters high. The most recent tsunami caused by the slump was in 1975, and it managed to reach... Bro, 400 meters high, you know how... That's like... If you take LeBron James and you take like 20 LeBron James stacked on top of each other and you got that, wait, did she say 400 or 200? Bro, what? My math is horrible too, bro. Just don't even listen. Oh my God, bro all the way to California. The slump could potentially drop 12,000 cubic meters of rock into the Pacific Ocean, which would create a mega tsunami that meters? would travel through the Pacific Ocean and even reach the western seaboard in just a few hours. This would totally ruin any coastal communities. While scientists are pretty sure we have a while... I mean, if you think about it, you don't need to buy that car no more because it's going <clears> to... <throat> until there's a landslide on the slope so big that it generates a mega tsunami, the earth is always changing and all it would take would be a strong jolt from an earthquake. So we never really know. <laughs> Moving on down to number eight, we have heat waves. 
while I enjoy a nice hot summer day, there certainly is a limit. Because of climate change, we are facing changes in temperatures that could be detrimental. Heat waves are becoming increasingly more common, and if greenhouse gas emissions aren't significantly decreased, we'll keep seeing the if you're from the Middle East, bro, you're good. You know what this feels like. We're good, right? All right, let's... These temperature changes. Light, there light. are many threats that extreme heat poses, but it is also one of the leading causes of weather-related deaths. Obviously. Some other threats include wildfires, threats to agriculture and livestock, and it can even lower the ability of power transmission lines, which could potentially lead to unreliable electricity. Even just a few degrees is cause for concern, so maybe it is time we change our ways and get the big corporations who are responsible for the majority of our emissions on board to drive us towards a brighter and cooler future. Headed off to our number seven spot, we have another super volcano, but this time we're headed into Lake Toba in Indonesia. The last time this super volcano erupted was roughly 74,000 years ago, but it is said that the eruption was so devastating, it almost wiped out humans entirely. To think that we could not be here watching this video right now is crazy. The reason that the volcano eruption was so devastating is because it is believed that after it erupted, it sent the world into an ice age, cooling some regions as much as 15 degrees Celsius. I would have thought the aftermath of a volcano would do the opposite, but I am very obviously not a scientist. While people who are actually scientists believe that we still have a while until a large eruption, the volcano's magma chamber is still very active. Continuing on in our number six spot, we have a potential phosphorus shortage. This is something I never thought I'd ever have to think about, but alas. For hundreds of years, there has been a worry of not being able to feed Earth's ever-growing population, and near the turn of the 20th century... Bro, maybe I'm getting this wrong, but I feel like that's bullshit, but... Just because there's so many, look, if if, if the, you're talking about like our population is like growing and everything and we're losing, I feel like, look, there's enough like multi billionaires in the world to feed the whole world. But let me see, maybe I'm just tripping. Maybe it's just like actual food. But then again, I don't know. Let me see century, this really came to a head because of the lack of nitrates and ammonia available. Mm. Luckily, the German chemists Fritz Haber and Karl Bosch were able to come up with a process that takes gas from the air and turns it into fertilizer. Problem solved, right? Well, yes, until we began to realize our shortage of phosphorus. Our bodies need phosphorus for things like moving around energy and to build DNA and cells. While we aren't going to run out of phosphorus tomorrow, we are about 30 to 40 years away, but the push for biofuel could push us even closer to the edge. This is really stressful because biofuel is so important and we need to start using it more, but then it will create this phosphorus problem. Hopefully our scientists will be able to find a solution for both of these problems and save us. At our halfway point coming in at number five, we have the thermohaline circulation and its potential shutdown. There are a lot of these cool built-in systems that Earth has that we don't even realize are happening around us, or at least I don't. Some of these systems, if altered, could create climate changes for centuries. Scientists have been warning us about climate change for years, and this is just one of the many reasons why. If the Arctic ice melts too quickly and the new fresh water spreads across the North Atlantic Ocean, it will shut down a looping global current that is plus the, the what's it called the, the water water level like will rise so high bro there's gonna be so many like tsunamis and like so many so many lands gonna go underwater yo Grizzly the scientist bro Grizzly the science guy vital to the Earth's climate called thermohaline circulation, or THC, not that kind of THC. The THC is run off a mix of heat and density, and the circulation of it helps transport heat around the world. As an example, Atlantic surface waters warm up near Florida and then flow northeast towards Europe. This is part of the reason why London has a fairly mild climate, even though it's on the same latitude as the very cold Calgary, which is in Alberta, Canada, and also Kiev in the Ukraine. If the THC shut down, it could cause a sort of mini ice age. The THC has shut down before, so it is possible that if it did shut down, it would eventually be up and running again, but the worst case scenario is that a mini ice age combined with our already changing climate could be detrimental to the human race. Moving on to number four, we have the potential of an asteroid hitting Earth. We all know, or at least have heard, that the dinosaurs were wiped out by an asteroid. If an asteroid were to hit Earth now, there is a good chance it would have a 
You know what's crazy, bro? Never mind. I'm gonna keep it to after because maybe she talks about it, but a similar effect, but this time on humans. There have been dozens of asteroids that have nearly missed Earth, and a lot of them have been known and had their paths calculated beforehand to ensure our safety. But there also have been a lot of near misses that weren't seen until right before, or sometimes even after the asteroid had already passed. There have been five near misses in 2020 alone. In 2028, there is an asteroid called 1996. 7XF11 that will come extremely close to hitting Earth, but as of right now, scientists believe that it will miss the planet. If this asteroid did you know that you are over 200% more likely to be Get stolen money. From online? That's why you need a when I start making money on this on YouTube and I, I post ads, y'all better watch all my ads. Billionaire in the making to hit Earth, it would be a mile-wide asteroid hitting Earth at about 30,000 miles per hour, which is similar to a 1 million megaton bomb, which would most likely wipe out most of all the life on Earth. So let's hope that doesn't happen, or Elon Musk can send us to Mars by 2028. Heading to our number three spot, we have a potential earthquake. Back in 2014, there was an earthquake in Chile that had a magnitude of 8.2. The earthquake was caused by the meeting of two of Earth's continental plates, the Pacific Plate and the Nazca Plate. But scientists believe that this earthquake could have been the start of something bigger. The previous earthquake was called a mega thrust, and it was pretty bad. It triggered landslides, cut power, and created a tsunami, but it is believed that this earthquake only released one third of the built up tension between the plates. That could mean that an even larger, more deadly earthquake could be headed for the same area, and it is expected to happen sometime soon. Headed down to number two, we have the potential for solar storms and a solar flare. The sun is the center of our universe and is one of the most important things for human life. The sun goes through its own phases and has increases and decreases in activity. When the sun is very active, it can cause a solar flare. A powerful flare can be accompanied by coronal mass ejection, which is a billion ton cloud of magnetized plasma. While this sort of process happens sometimes, it is usually okay for us and we would never even know, but there is a possibility for it to be so huge that it really impacts us. What this could mean for us is that the electromagnetic pulses that are generated by it could cause terrible damage or even knock out most of our electronics. One of the worst times this happened in our recent history was in 1921, and it ended up knocking out the US telegraph service. But with how much technology we have today, if something similar were to happen, it could knock out many satellite systems, which would ruin all global communications, the internet, and even GPS. It would be absolute chaos if that happened. While we never really know what is going to happen, it is said that there is only- You know what's crazy, bro? The reason we haven't found aliens, I feel like, you know, because when we like we, when we take telescopes, right, and we like scope at other planets to see if there's people, we don't see lights, right? Like you know when you look at Earth, like uh, at night, there's like light from all these buildings and all that technology and light, so you could see it, right? But if somebody like that's, uh, let's say, seven hundred billion light years away, if they look at us, they they can't like like look at us immediately and see what's happening in the current time because like they're you know time is slower like when you go through space you know what i mean like you go 100 billion light years away i think it's like what it's like 100 years away you know so like they're in a hundred they're 100 years in the past or whatever so when they look at us they can't really see us right now right so i feel like that's why we haven't found aliens yet or maybe we have and i just don't know but yeah let's get back to the video though bro only a 12% chance of this happening in the next decade. I would prefer a 0% chance, but I guess 12 will have to do. And in our number one spot today, we have what is known as the big one. At the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, just off the west coast of North America, there is a subduction zone. A subduction zone is an area where two tectonic plates have collided and one begins to slide underneath the other curving down into the mantle, which is the hot layer underneath the crust of the Earth. At this specific subduction zone, the Pacific Ocean floor is being pushed under North America. 
it is actually moving 40 millimeters a year, which doesn't seem like a lot, but that's kind of crazy. What's not so good about this though, is that the upper part or the North American part is actually stuck and is being compressed. And at some point it is going to need to release all that built up pressure. This is where the big one comes in. The release of the pressure is going to be an earthquake, but it's going to- I was getting stuck with my music. Nothing was ever done, nothing was ever finished. Lander really gives me exactly Bye. to be huge with a potential magnitude of nine. This could potentially cause the coastal region to sink up to two meters and move horizontally up to 30 meters. No signs of uh, the end of the world uh, in Islam. Three major earthquakes, I'm just saying. After the shaking of the earthquake is over, it will be time for the tsunami. I'm not sure if you guys remember the 2011 earthquake that caused a tsunami in Japan, but they are saying that this one could be even bigger than that. And that is not to make the 2011 tsunami seem small because it was absolutely catastrophic. Around 7 million people will be affected if this happens, from Vancouver to Seattle, Tacoma, and Portland. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. I'm your host, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you next time. Original video will be in the link down below, guys. Check her out. But yeah, guys, it's going to be the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. Show love, guys. If you're watching this and you don't know me, subscribe now before I make it after. Because, you know, I wouldn't want you... Look, if you watch this and you didn't subscribe and then you watch this again in the future, don't even subscribe, bro. Real talk. Anyways, bro, thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, and comment. And let me know what you guys think. And uh, check out my social media somewhere up there. And yeah, guys, gonna be the end of the video. What the business, bro? <laughs>